Today it's max effort day in the bench. We're going to do the lighting method with bands overhead. Uh, this method is just like benching with a bench shirt. Uh, the weights are lightened in the bottom and they're heavier at the top. And so uh, you're going to see a lot of strong benchers in here today. Rob Fuser, 660. Kenny Patterson holds two world records. And incidentally, two weeks ago, George Halbert, who holds the world record at 220, also bent 630, 198. So this gym, out of 12 weight classes, we hold four all-time bench records. And I don't think that's uh, unprecedented in the sport of powerlifting. Uh, so we're going to go in here right now, do some uh, band pressing, and when we're finished, we're going to show you some chain pressing as well, where we work up to one particular weight, say 275, and you bench with a chain. And then you add a second chain, a third chain, and a fourth chain. Now remember, this is done on max effort day. This is not our speed day, but max effort. I don't believe a max effort day has ever been shown here at Westside. So let's go in there and work out. Let's go.
right, folks, first of all, they did the light method with the bands. That band reduces the weight at the chest, 95 pounds. Uh, Kenny and Rob worked up to 615. Now, Kenny, everybody, he's world famous, two world records. And then Rob's done 660 bench in a full meet, total 2275. He's only 23 years old. He's only been six power meets. Uh, then you watch Amy. Now, Amy Weisberger is the strongest power pound woman in the world. So 11, 1180 in the 123s, plus the next week he came back and benched two world records, 286 and 292 in the 123s. Uh, then you watch me do a set of JMs, always lower the bar, straight down over the clavicle, tilt the wrist back, put all the pressure on the tricep muscles by the elbow, then extend it straight back up. Then you watch the guy do some dumbbell extensions with without bands. Uh, the bands uh, help um, on the resistance curve, makes you a lot stronger locking out the weights. And then uh, after the workout, we didn't do everything, but lots of lats, that's, that's after the tries. Tries most important, lats next, upper back, delt raises. And you watch Dave Tate do some sled work for the upper body. It's great for GPP, great for football, all sports, but really powerlifting. As far as the shirts, you wonder what shirts we wear, the best shirts in the world are the Enzers. We wear denim, and they have a special cut. You don't want the elbows out to the side, you want the elbows tucked, and where the bar will go in a straight line where there's no rotation of the rotators. Uh, and when you turn your elbows out, that's where everyone will stick. You also have rotator injuries and soft tissue injuries to the pectorials. Uh, people ask me, why is change different in weight? You'll notice how we had the chains on the bar. That is the correct method of how you put a chain. When the barbell is at Amy's chest, basically, all, there is no weight on the uh, chain weight is all on the ground. As she locks it out, she locked out uh, in that workout actually uh, three large chains, which would be um, 60 extra pounds. And that's how that works. As the weight comes off, it, it, it's, it goes in the relationship of the uh, strength curve. As the weights come off the ground, it gets heavier and heavier and heavier. As you lower down, it lightens. That's the way uh, the resistance should be. It's called the uh, resistance curve. A lot of people talk about psychology of lifting. Well, here at Westside, we have two groups. The AM group, which I am part of, Chuck Vogelpohl, Dave Tate, Mike Pogerio, Rob Fusner, Kenny Patterson, uh, and uh, Chester... Um, and uh, these are the strong guys. These guys total 2,200 pounds. There's actually four of them squat 900 pounds. All the world records trained in. In the evening crew, uh, it's a different group. They squat approximately 820 pounds on the average and bench in the mid fives up to the high fives. Uh, the difference is uh, this gym, there's always animosity, emailing each other back and forth, leaving notes on the board, constantly fighting among each other uh, until we go to a contest. Then when Westlake goes to a contest, it's a clan. Everyone's for each other. And that's why lifting has to be. You always have to have a reason to come to the gym. Uh, your training partner may hate your gut, so if you don't show up, he has no reason to lift hard. So always show up. Never miss workouts. I came to workouts with a trach. I had a hole in my throat, as large as a quarter. I never missed a workout. Chuck Vogelpool brought me in there and made me bench. I benched in a meet. I just missed a 535 bench years ago in a meet, and I was in intensive care for five days. Chuck brought me, the first thing he did was take me to the gym, and I maxed out in the bench. I benched 350 pounds with a hole, uh, just chest tubes, Recently shut up and uh, still a hole in my throat. I didn't require a trach. I could talk about a trach. And that's what Westside's about. you got to be hardcore, and you only do this for a few years, so you have to get in there and go full speed. Go out in the flames. Don't go out any other way. All right, folks, a lot of people ask about when people come here, are they, or do we start with the best? No. We developed 47 leads out of this gym. Some people never touched weights. And how about the bench? We're talking the bench today. So I can give you uh, Jeff Adams' is nickname, Gritter. Uh, Jeff lifted for 10 years in Dayton, Ohio, had a 363-pound bench. He trained here three years uh, and benched 585 pounds in the same weight class, 198. He's 43 years old. Another fellow, Matt Smith, came. He had a 505-pound bench. Uh, he was locked there for about a year and a half. He came and trained at Westside. He's always lived here in Columbus as well. Matt came in here, and inside of 10 months, he's done 585. Now, you, what about the elite? George Halbert, when George trained here in Columbus, he had a 475-pound bench press for two years. Uh, George came into this gym being stuck for two years, and in one year, he bent 628 pounds. Now, George is one of the most phenomenal benchers of all time, maybe outside of Mike McDonald. He's held world records in the 242s, 220s, and uh, now 198, he bent 630 pounds. He actually opened up with it, smoked it, but injured his bicep slightly and declined any further attempts. Uh, so that just gives you an idea what the produ uh, what the, uh, how people progress here. It doesn't matter. It's the training. Training is um, not what people think. It's biomechanics, physics, and mathematics. Anybody can pick up weights. This old stuff of fives and threes is so archaic, it's pathetic. Progressive overload, it's actually called a progressive 
gradual overload. That's what Milo did. Remember him picking up the calf? Well, how come Milo ever got to picking up elephants? Once the bull got big enough, he had to start over, and that's what all you guys do. You start over and reach the same point, failure. This is the most modern method of training. It's known as the one day is a dynamic method, where it's development of speed and starting strength. And then this is a maximum effort method where you, we, uh, we max out every Wednesday all year long. No one else can do it this way. Uh, th and we use the conjugate method where we switch exercises every week and you put in special exercises to your particular needs. Well, folks, that's brief, but I hope that takes care of it. And for now, take care and see you again at Westside.